50? Well, it's well, it's better. It's better <laughs> than the alternative. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, who said that? Uh, Marie Chevalier, upon the occasion of his 80th birthday, said uh, he beats the alternative. <laughs> so, um, so I was looking for a way to end it, and I kind of had an ending chapter in mind. That's it, a reconciliation uh, chapter, but I didn't have the the basis of the impact of this. So as soon as I made the the uh, trip, and all, my brother was along and his wife, etc., um, I got back to where we were staying, and I sat down and wrote the wrote the experience down that I was looking for in the novel. Um, and I think, it, I think it carries through because it's, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it works out. I didn't end it there. I ended it with a uh, fanciful, well, it was a good ending. Okay, my daughter graduates from college and we end up, we end up singing Gaudiama Sigatur, which, you know, couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, in, in addition to this uh, published work, you also have a novella. Yeah. Which uh, has also been published? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, this is a short book. It's quite, it's a rough and ready, as opposed to trying to develop characters here. There are two characters in this book, and they decide through circumstances that they're going to rob a bank. And they're going to do it in a very subtle way. They're going to rob the safe deposit boxes. They're not going to try to be dumb enough to go after the vault. And uh, they plan this out extremely carefully. They take a recon. They actually go down and rehearse it. Um, they are uh, very talented, uh, one in electrical systems and the other in uh, picking locks. And uh, they get in there and they haul out $48 million. Well, now the problem comes. How do you get rid of $48 million? You can't put it in a Swiss bank account yet because the Federal Bureau of Investigation is checking all out of the country, you know, uh, passports to Switzerland. So they set up a, a way of uh, hiding it and then they give it to worthwhile uh, uh, social organizations, American Cancer Society, American Heart Society, etc. And they give it from anonymously and they give it from different parts of the country. So they, they're pretty wily. Um, so this book is a different kind of a book. Um, this was written, I finished this before I finished this. They were published just oddly enough in nine days apart in November, and they have the same cover. The same cover was not an accident. Well, it was. I was looking for something that would show Arizona, <laughs> and I couldn't get it um, because I couldn't really find what I was after. Uh, I couldn't go to Arizona highways because then you have to pay a you know a fee to use their photos. And so I just decided, well, I own this. Okay, I'll use it. And it's not bad uh, when it says it must be perfect. It's probably talking about the mountains. So, same now, cover. Why did you include electrical systems in there? Is it anything that would have to part of your life or uh, not? Not really. Okay. I, but what I what I was after is anybody knows that there are sonic alarms and there are visual alarms and there touch. You know, everything is alarmed, even in, even for safe deposit boxes. What was necessary is to find a way into the vault and then to basically build pass keys so you could open up the, um, uh, all the customer boxes because those were different keys. The bank had a pass key for its side of the locks, you know, they're double locks. Um, it, it was necessary to disarm all the electrical systems. There was a guard up top and what we had to do was to show that the, in spite of the fact that there were lights off, his board showed green. So every, every little I look back on this and I think, well, there's some things that are missing, you know, because it was a complex operation. Um, okay, now your background is from Princeton yes. University, is yes. that correct? Correct. And uh, your major there was? English. Was it English structurally or uh, was it literature? Well, it was both. It's um, both. There was very little emphasis on, uh, on uh, there was some Middle English and some Old English. Uh, everybody has to have that. But most of it was English literature, and most of it was in the 19th and the 20th centuries. There was some non-English literature, uh, some Russian writers. But essentially, it's Eng I guess if you had to say it was English literature. But it wasn't called that. It was called English, you know, there are three forms of English, old, middle, and new, and uh, we were expected to know something about that, but that wasn't the primary emphasis. Okay, now Princeton at that time, um, what would have been a subject you would have studied? You remember those days yep. of Princeton? Yes. Insofar as? Engineering. 
And the reason it was engineering... No, I meant. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Engineering? Yeah. I thought you were an English major. I am. Let me explain how I became one. Okay. All right. First of all, I did. my parents are both English majors. Okay. So I had a... Oh, they are. ...proclivity okay. in that, that direction. Okay. Um, and grew up with it. Good, bad, or indifferent. Um, so it was kind of like in the background. However, those were the days, which some of us are old enough to remember, uh, that... Um, the Russians were beating us, okay? Do you remember the Sputnik thing and all the Russian engineering? And so I thought... That's well, the 50s. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I thought it's, um, it's patriotic to be an engineer, truly patriotic. You, you have to do it. You have to get America back onto the engineering track and inventions and you know, all of the uh, stuff that made America a great country. So I took math, physics, and chemistry in prep school, and when I got to Princeton, I had was admitted as an engineer. Well, when you're an engineer, you have to go early, you have to go three weeks early, and you have to learn surveying. I thought surveying was fun. Okay, that was fun. Then I looked at the curriculum, and I said what one of my colleagues had said, geez, I love engineering, but I don't like math, physics, and chemistry. So that was kind of out. I knew I'd made a mistake. It was an agonizing decision. I finally said at the end of three weeks, this was, this was not me. Okay, this was not what I would enjoy. It was in tremendously hard work, and I didn't really love math, physics, and chemistry. So I switched over to English, which, I, which was a good choice. It could have been history, but I thought English was, English would make my mom happy, my dad so-so, you know. Now, what did they do with their English backgrounds? My mother was a housewife, and, and she also worked, but she was a housewife, and she wrote poetry, and she also wrote music. And now, do you have any music. of her poetry that... I wish I did. It, wish I'm, did. I'm afraid okay. it's gone. Um, that was a very serious thing. My father worked a lot in genealogy. Um, he tried to put together the checkered family history, and uh, uh, he did a pretty good job of it. He was also a voracious reader, and he also had a, an incredible vocabulary, which he passed on. And I'd ask what a word was, and his standard answer was, look it up. Mm -hmm. you know? So you do learn more by looking it up than listening to what people say the meaning of the word is. So he was. Uh, he was an English major. My mom was an English major. But they did not teach it? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Now, what was, what aspire, what, was writing always an aspiration of yours, or uh, you've done it along the line before you came to the novel itself? Uh, well, I think the best way of putting it is you have to learn how to write. I mean, you can have it, as I think you and I have discussed, you can have it in your, in your not genes, but you can be born with it, and you can also be brought up with it, which I was. Um, I did some writing in prep school, and I r was the news editor for the local news, the, the school paper. That taught me two things. Uh, one is uh, be very careful, exact about description, because you're writing about people that <laughs> can quarrel with it. And two is get the story out and get out of the story. It's the old saying, what, when, why, you know, the lead-in paragraph. Um, that was, a, um, that was a good lesson. Uh, yeah. And also the other one that's extremely important in writing is you, you got to meet your deadlines. <laughs> that's probably where I learned some of the craft. I didn't have time in college. It was so, well, I did. Okay, I take that back. I wrote my thesis, which is on Stephen Crane. But um, that was, you know, that was 20,000 words. If you went over 10% under or 10% over, you got marked down. It was kind of like a standard exercise. It was not creative writing. It was expository writing. Which, I, which was fine, but not the kind of writing I really wanted to do. And that was for your bachelor's? Yes, okay. correct. And it had to be 20,000? Plus within or minus that, 10. Yes, plus or minus 10%. Now, um, so you still have a copy of that? Yes, I do. Okay. I didn't bring it with me, though. Okay, yeah. It's all dusty. Well, I understand that, because I have one that's also <laughs> yes. residing yes. Uh, in uh, my uh, closet somewhere, or one of my cabinets somewhere, a, a thesis. But... Uh, these, uh, theses are not mainly required today to, for a bachelor's well, at, degree. Well, at Princeton, uh, almost from its beginning, they expect it, one, they expect you to be a scholar, not just somebody who's passing through for four years. Two is um, everybody, without exception, well, the engineers, okay, they were accepted because they had such a tough curriculum, was expected to write a, th a thesis. Um, that normally is an, a requirement of graduate school, but they treated you as though you were in graduate school. Um, so I had to write a thesis.